grade sevens, welcome to our very next natural sciences lesson. I'm Helen and we today are focusing further on the topic of insulation. And we're asking the question, why do we need insulating materials? In our everyday lives, we need to use insulating materials and we do use insulating materials. And the question is why? Let's remind ourselves what we mean by insulation. So in our last lesson, we had a bunch of snowmen running around with hats and scarves on. And now today we are led through our lesson by the penguins. And the penguins are also wearing hats and scarves to keep themselves warm. So in answering the question, what is insulation? We first need to understand that heat is the transfer or movement of energy by conduction, convection, and radiation. And the important thing is that the heat energy moves from a hotter object or substance to a cooler object or substance. So if it is cold outside, our penguin is going to lose heat energy from his body to the outside. Insulation reduces the rate at which that energy transfer happens. So here's the energy transfer. Insulation is going to block or it's going to reduce, it is going to retard, it is going to slow that rate at which the energy transfer happens. So we know that insulation then is a process which slows that process of heat energy transfer. The two things work against each other. Heat energy is wanting to be transferred from hotter to colder substance or, or object, and insulation is blocking that transfer of heat energy. Now, why in our everyday lives do we need insulating materials? Transfers of heat energy are important in our lives. We need them for heating purposes. We need to boil water. We need to cook food. We need to warm our houses. But sometimes we want to prevent thermal energy transfers. And in these situations, we make use of insulation. So we could make the handles of our pot, for example, out of plastic. We are still using heat energy transfers to cook the food, but now we won't hurt ourselves when we lift up the pot or the lid. We could make our handle and our lid of the kettle out of wood, for example, and that is going to insulate the material so that we don't burn ourselves when we lift the kettle and pour or when we lift the lid. In terms of our energy that we gain from um, in the room from having a fire, we need to make sure that that wonderful heat isn't transferred to outside. We need to block that transfer to the outside of our home. We need to keep that heat circulating by convection currents within our home. And likewise, in order to stop us from losing body heat to the environment, we need to wear clothing that is going to insulate us. And so materials such as wool, such as wood, the plastic, and some kind of mechanism to keep those convection currents sealed in the house, like closing windows, and making sure that we pull a curtain over the window. Those are going to be things or instances of us using materials for insulation. 
Now, let's ask the very important question. Why do our homes need to be insulated? Well, it's actually for a very practical reason. When it's cold, we spend money and we use energy sources in order to heat up our home. So we might, for example, have a heater that is going to be uh, warming up our home or in another room we may actually even have a fireplace that is going to be warming up the room. The heater costs money, rands and cents. The wood costs money. The heater, not only the heater itself, but it has to be plugged into an electrical outlet and electricity that we use to heat our homes, that costs lots of money. And we use energy sources. We could be using wood for a fire, but we're also using coal in order to produce electricity. We know that in our country, Eskom is having a problem with the amount of energy it is diverting to our homes and all of those energy transfers and heat energy transfers that happen in our homes as a result could be compromised by a lack of coal or an insufficient supply of electricity. And so it seems very wasteful not to insulate our home because we're producing this heat energy and the heat energy would simply being radiate out to the outside or be conducted to the outside and therefore we call it, do you remember that word again? Dissipated heat energy. In other words, that heat energy is lost. It is no longer purposeful heat energy that is heating our homes. So we need to minimize heat loss from the house so that it stays warm and so that we don't waste our money. Very practical. So we're going to try and find ways to maybe put things in our ceilings of our house, to make sure we've got curtains on our windows to make sure we've got carpets on our floors and these things are going to insulate our home. Now in a lesson, in a, in a couple of lessons time, we are going to look at ways to heat the house. So I'm just going to plant that seed for you and you're going to think about it and maybe even evaluate your own home at this point in time to see are there ways that you are wasting money and allowing the heat to become lost from your house. Now let's explain what is happening in these photos. This is one appliance that uses a huge amount of electricity in your home. And of course, that translates into costs you a lot of money. And that is your hot water geyser. Right? That's how you spell it. Now, traditionally, a geyser is like a big kettle and it has an element and water is pumped into the geyser. It is warmed up and hot water is taken out of the geyser and down your pipes and it flows out of your taps into your bath and into your basin. Of course, it takes electricity to boil the water. So what we've got here is a situation where somebody has put their geyser on the roof and it is outside. And therefore, we're going to see lots of heat energy being conducted through the metal of the geyser and there will be a loss of heat. Sometimes geysers are placed inside the ceiling of a house. If your house is not a flat-topped house and it's got a, a roof, they might put the geyser inside the ceiling or 
inside the roof of your house. And yes, that will be better than putting it outside the house. There'll be less wastage of energy. But have a look at this photo. This photo shows us a geezer with a blanket on it. This geezer is also outside, all right? But I want you to look at the color of the blanket and I want you to look at how the blanket completely seals it. The blanket is a matte material which is going to absorb heat. The blanket completely seals the geezer. We see that the pipes carrying the hot water are not just the naked iron pipes or copper pipes. We're going to see that these pipes have got covering on it called lagging, which can simply be cloth wrapped around it, or in this case, they look very fancy. It looks like it's made out of a very dense sponge. And we can see that this geezer is also being helped with solar panels. So it is not only using electricity to warm that water, it is what we call a solar assisted geezer. So it is going to use the sun to help uh, trap heat from radiation. <clears throat> pardon, from radiation from the sun, it is going to have elements inside that do use electricity, particularly at night when there's no sun and on days when there is great cloud cover and so the radiation can't be trapped by our solar panels. Let's move from the roof of our house and look at how insulation material helps us to save money into our home. And let's explain what these items are used for. Let's start with these two items. This is called an insulated cup and this is called a thermos bottle. Do these names ring a bell for you? All right, what we do is we put hot liquids into our cup or into our thermos and instead of the sides of the thermos or the sides of the cup being made out of metal which will conduct heat energy from our hot drink out to the atmosphere and thus be wasting that energy, we use insulating material and we're going to see what these insulating materials are in our next lesson but we're going to use insulating material to block this conductivity or this conduction of heat energy and our wasting of that heat energy. This here is a cooler box and it insulates in exactly the same way as our thermos does, but in the opposite direction. Here we put ice blocks in the cooler box and we seal the cooler box. And if it's very, very hot outside, the heat is not going to be transferred to the cooler cold drinks or food in the cooler box, these substances or materials that make up the cooler box are going to insulate it against not cold loss but heat gain. And our penguin, how is our penguin insulated? Well, in our last lesson, we explained about how wool has got layers and fibers in it. But our penguin itself, of course, is covered with feathers. And feathers trap layers of air that is nice and warm against the surface of the penguin's skin and that keeps the penguin all toasty and warm and it insulates the penguin against heat loss from its body to the colder outside.
So you've learned about the fact that we need insulators to save us money and to prevent wasted heat loss. That's it for today. Join me again next time for more natural sciences. Goodbye, grade sevens. Thank you.